Today on Election Brief, Electoral Commission begins its implementation of what it calls queue management to control crowding at registration centers. We allow them to be closer to the center so that um, if for four hours we can handle the 40, we let them stay. We have details as the Peace Council tour some registration centers. We will be live on the ground. Also, police in Asante Akemagogo arrest three people suspected to be involved in a shooting incident. The three are said to be members of one faction of the two MPP groups who clashed. We heard the news that the MPs uh, Tundra vehicle have been attacked and vandalized the suburb of Agogo. The stranded person fired at the direction of the police. We're lucky. Uh, the, the regional CID uh, in Kumasi have taken over uh, investigation into the case. And vice presidential candidate for the Progressive People's Party in the 2016 election expresses disappointment over governing MPP's critique of Professor Nana Jenopokwajiman, describing it as pathetic. I can't even imagine that uh, this person has been given the opportunity to lead and make a difference and immediately we need to go and dig up debt on her just for political gain. I'm Arba Kumsin. We are live on your DSTV channel 144 and GoTV channel 421. We're also live on your digital terrestrial television because we are free to air. Stay tuned in. Thanks for your company. Now we start off with the Electoral Commission, which says it will now admit only 150 people at a registration center under a queue management system designed to address overcrowding. This is, however, taking place here in the Greater Accra region alone. The latest decision by the EC comes on the back of mounting pressure on the electoral body to suspend the ongoing exercise as Ghana's coronavirus case count surges. But the EC has made it clear suspending the voter registration exercise at this point in time is not an option on the table. The commission says any move to do so will create a serious constitutional problem. Maxwell Agwagba has been speaking to the registration officer at the Abusokai Methodist Church on how they are implementing the queue management system. Um, what happened is yesterday we couldn't do it because we met the numbers yesterday. But the advice was um, that um, as of today, if at center, when you look at the strength, if you, have, if you can do 120 or maybe 150, then you group them in groups of three. So maybe if it's 120, we have 40, 40, 40. So the first 40, we allow them to be closer to the center so that um, if for four hours we can handle the 40, we let them stay. Then the next 40, they are told to come, let's say from 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., depending on the time we give them. So that is what we have started today. So ideally, we have started with the first batch that we will be handling this morning. The next set have been told. Some have left, others are just hanging around, but most of them have left, and we have the ones that will be handling now. So you gave them numbers, or what did you do? Yes, we gave them numbers. Um, we have printed out numbers. If you can, I can pick a few and show you those who just came in the morning. We printed out numbers for them. So when they come, they come with the numbers and we know this is the number we are working with. I was asking the other registration officer and he's saying that because there are a lot of guarantors around, they are the ones making this place look crowded, yes, although you've implemented... Yes, there are guarantors who are really, you no, know, we need two. So some of them will be in the queue. Then when it gets to their 10, we advise that the guarantors stay out. So when it's getting to your 10, then you call them to come in. But some of them do not want to go far. So, because when they get in and you tell the words of Garanta, he will tell you uh, he, he's in the house, he's in the house. So we tell them to stay around, to just hang around. And so the Garantas are really making the numbers quite huge. But the new registrants are just a few. Now, the new patriotic party agent at the Chotoma Registration Center in the Akan constituency in the Volta region, Agosin Francis, was on Saturday assaulted by some people when he had challenge their eligibility of uh, some individuals who try to register during the first phase of the ongoing electoral registration exercise. He's been sharing his ordeal with correspondent uh, Peter Senu. But for the attack on Francis Agosin, the first phase of the voters' registration exercise would have ended an incident-free in the Akan constituency. 
Francis was scheduled by his party to the Chotome Registration Center, a border community to the Republic of Togo. This area is very hard to reach. It took officials of the Electoral Commission more than half an hour to get to the center. Are you sure you cannot go? <laughs> Jump. Jump. The only crime Francis committed was to challenge a non-resident who he believed was coming from Togo. Francis has been sharing his ordeal with Joy News. I went to Chatama to continue my official duty as a police agent. And a man came and I challenged him not being a Ghanaian and not a residence of Chatome, a lateral area. And he got annoyed and left the area. The man who left because I want to challenge him came back and walked towards me directly and said, Kofi Ago, I want to assure you that the following day, which will be tomorrow, he's coming to register. And if I challenge him, he will beat me and kill me. And he left. The following day, came to my desk, hit at my desk three times, and she called my name three consecutive times, Kofi, Kofi. Today, I will let my tax beat you. And when you die, I'll bury you at where your late brother has been buried in Chatham. And uh, the rest of the two held to me, pulled me out of my desk, started beating me. Francis also has this advice for his colleagues of the political divide. If no security has been provided to that center, the person shouldn't go. Because his life lies in life and death. The regional police commander of DCOP Polity is warning residents in the region, adding the police would act without any political considerations. For nobody can take the law into his hands, just as I said. And so if you flout the regulations, we will deal with you. The regional minister, Kwesi Osu Yeboa, has also been visiting some registration centers to apprise himself of the situation on the ground. He is appealing for calm as the law takes its course. Whether you are national or not, uh, the law requires that you should behave responsibly. And therefore, anybody who will engage in any unlawful act uh, will, be, will be arrested and prosecuted because we want to live in a state of law and order. We believe that to ensure security, the law must be enforced. People must respect the law. So I'm appealing to all citizens that there is a need for all of us. You see, to be law abiding and to follow the regulations as laid down by EC. If we don't understand anything or we are in disagreement, we should express it in a very calm manner. I mean, that is a way to accomplish results. But if we take the law into our own hands, then we risk the danger of, uh, as it were, violating the law and we'll be treated as such. Peter Sanu for Joy News. Now to the Ashanti region, where police in the Asante Akim Agogo uh, area have arrested three people suspected to be involved in a shooting incident last week. The three are said to be members of one faction of the two NPP groups who clashed there. Uh, there's been bad blood between supporters of former MP Kujuba Ajeman and uh, the incumbent Andy Apia Kubi over the years. And this has generated, degenerated rather, into an open for all fight last week with some persons firing gunshots into the MP's vehicle, injuring one person. Nana Yajima takes a look at the long-standing feud and recent occurrence in the area. Election of party executives in 2018 saw guns being fired, but nobody suffered for it. Bad blood between supporters of Mr. Bajiman and Apia Kubi dates back to 2015 after Apia Kubi defeated then MP in parliamentary primaries. In last month's primaries, supporters of former MP sought court injunction to halt party primary as they challenged voter album. Elections were held eventually, even though Electoral Commission stayed away due to a court injunction. Before then, Mr. Benjamin had pulled out of the contest, 
citing process leading to the poll as unfair. One person, however, deferred to vote the former MP. The recent physical exchanges, according to police, started from the party office and taken onto the streets of Agogo. They fought to the extent that they came out from party office and fought on the street. It was a free-for-all fight. And the police were helpless. There was nothing we could do. There was no way we could also fire tear gas to disperse them. So at the end of the day, they, all of them came to a police station to lodge cases against themselves. We gave them medical form to go to hospital. After about 30 minutes, then we had we heard the news that the MPs uh, Tundra vehicle had been attacked and vandalized the suburb of Agogo. So uh, finally, I have to uh, lead my men to that particular place and we were able to uh, secure the environment. Even though some uh, the stranded person fired at the direction of the police, we we're lucky. Uh, the, the regional CID uh, in Kumasi have taken over uh, investigation into the case. The camp of MP and the appear could be is blamed. She says, I heard some men were after my husband, chasing him with guns. It was the MP's boys and the DCE who were chasing him. By God's grace, he managed to escape. Some individuals will point hands at the MP and the appear could be. However, the MP's aide, Derek Amwa, denies the allegations. We went after the car because they pelted us with stones. We only wanted to know who was in the vehicle. Immediately it stopped, they started shooting at us. The shots were from different directions. For Joy News, Nanaya Ojima reporting. Now, following the announcement that NDC flag bearer has settled on Professor Nana Jeno Pokwajiman to partner him in the December polls, there have been various reactions to the announcement, with the governing MPP describing it as a bad choice. But the NDC says the choice of Professor Pokwajiman as running mate was influenced by calls. Uh, by the grassroots uh, for integrity in politics. Alex Serafia is Deputy Campaign Coordinator for the NDC. The NDC has a plethora of people who could have filled that position, and many of them had shown or demonstrated interest in actually becoming the running mate to His Excellency. However, one of the things or a part of the reason why I think she was chosen is because Actually, she brings a totally different face to the politics of Ghana. If you go around and you speak to many people nowadays, what they tell you is that politicians are all the same. And they also tend to intimate that there is no difference, say, between the NDC and the MPP for some people. And I personally think that the politics of Ghana is going down the drain in terms of the kind of politics we are dealing with and how we perform, to bring in somebody like Professor Opoku Ajima, it changes the dynamics and it gives hope to a whole plethora of people that, look, notwithstanding what is happening, there's a hope that we are now going to shift the type of politics that has been played over years into a different form of politics, mm -hmm. politics of truth, politics of standing up for what is right, politics of thinking of people's welfare and putting them at the forefront. And they, they just, those attributes just go to reinforce the personality of the flag bearer himself, but it gives it an extra boost when you pick a personality like Professor Nana Jane Opoko Ajiman. So for me, that is one of the biggest issues. Her integrity is unquestionable. She is completely competent. She is clearly somebody who delivers. And at the, with all these things, she's a fantastic, pleasant human being. So when you put all these things together, I have the smile on my face because it has made the job of my boss, Professor Alabia's campaign coordinator and me as a, a lot, lot easier in terms of how we move forward. 
Meanwhile, former running mate for the Progressive uh, People's Party in the 2016 election, Bridget Jobrenuku, has described the governing MPP's critique of Professor uh, Opoku Ajeman as pathetic. She says the governing party is simply perpetrating a culture of competition that has not benefited the country. The MPP met the announcement of Professor Opoku Ajeman as flag bearer with an attack on her track record as Minister for Education. But speaking on Prime Morning on Joy Prime, however, Bridget Jobinuku was disappointed in their reaction. It's pathetic. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's deeply, it's pathetic. I can't even imagine that uh, this person has been given the opportunity to lead and make a difference. And immediately, we need to go and dig up debt on her just for political gain, just for political gain. Some of it might be true, some of it might not be true. But you see, we, we, we are not static people. We grow and we learn. Whatever she did yesterday or two days ago, she's obviously learned and move, is, is moving on from there. Hopefully to be a better. And if you're going to use this for that reason to cast, cut her down to, I don't know what the point is. You see, they say that we judge people by the things we most detest in ourselves. And this is exactly what Mr. Bwabeng, as some wife, I got the name right, is doing. Mm -hmm. we, 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 you know, we, we judge people by, by our own shortcomings. And this is, this is what they are doing. So clearly, this announcement has been received with applause by gender activists in the country who've hailed it as a momentous occasion in the country's politics. Joining me via Zoom is a convener for Abantu for Development, Rose Mensakutin, for some thoughts on this. I'm very grateful for your time, Madam Rose Mensakutin. Of course, we know that it's not the first time a woman has been selected as a running mate for a political party. Eva Loko and then Bridget Jobanuku were selected uh, for the PPP. But for a major political party like the NDC, what message does this send? First of all, uh, thank you for the opportunity to share some thoughts on this issue, which is generating a lot of discussion. And I also want to take the opportunity to congratulate Professor Jenana Opoku Adjiman. Women. I think for us as women who have dedicated ourselves to championing the cause of women. We are always very happy when we find a woman given an opportunity to serve and also a, a chance to really show that she is capable. So we are very, very happy that she has been given this opportunity. Secondly, we want to see this as work in progress in the sense that we have been working on these issues for years. And throughout the period of our work, we have seen that we have been getting incremental changes in terms of the recognition of women like a uh, to take part in the governance of this country. However, we want to stress the point that we are happy when these things happen, but what we are looking have also been championing the cause of the Affirmative Action Bill movement. We are very happy because we feel that women are capable. We see their participation in leadership positions as a right, not a, you know, it's a right. And therefore, whenever these things happen, we are happy, we come out and we support the candidature. Right, madam. And, that, oh. and I think that for a major political party, which is also in opposition, to make this choice is quite laudable. Right. But we know about her brilliant academic track record, about her intellectual fortitude. We know all of that. But some say that she will only act in a supportive capacity. That is, if uh, the NDC wins. But how do you think these attributes will reflect on governance? You mean her attributes as an academic or the questions people are raising? That her attributes as an academic, her intellectual fortitude. Well, yes. He, as a vice as a vice chancellor at the University of Cape Coast, 
And when she became Minister of um, Education, of course, I'm not an assessor of the positions and the performances of people when they hold power. Right. But a woman, I think she did what she had to do. And you always, when you are a leader, you don't work in isolation. You work in a collective. And the decisions and the policies of the party will determine the trajectories that she will bring when it comes to the fact that she actually gets to become a vice president. Mm. And, and uh, I know that you and many of your colleagues in the gender activism space have been advocating for the passage of the Affirmative Action Bill for years. Will her appointment yes. make any difference to the commitment by the political party to ensure more female inclusion across board? Well, I want to say that these political parties, they have signed on to so many documents that women's organizations and indeed structures of state have actually also helped for them to recognize that this is a need and it's a requirement. And so I think that they have that mandate to make sure that both women and men have an equal chance to participate in the governance on this country. As for her as an individual, Coming to change the dynamics, I think there is a possibility, given that she herself is a woman and she knows what it is to be a woman in such a, dom a male-dominated space. Uh, if she were to tell you what she has gone through uh, being a female academic in the literature field, being a female first vice chancellor in the University of Ghana, mm. being a, a woman who became the um, the convener, rather, for uh, Abantu for Development, uh, Rose Mensakutin, there sharing her thoughts on the selection of Professor Jane Nana Opoku Ajeman there. Now, some professors at the University of Cape Coast, where the running mate to presidential candidate of the NDC uh, uh, was vice chancellor, have been speaking about the leadership qualities of Professor Jane Nana Opoku Ajeman, whilst others believe she did her best while she occupied that position. Some others believe, apart from the academic record, there's nothing basically to show for it in terms of leadership. Professor George Kweku Odro, former Pro VC of UCC, and Professor Kwame Ose Kwating, current Dean of the Faculty of Arts, who both occupied various positions under the leadership of Professor uh, Opoku Ajeman, uh, have been sharing their thoughts. So I wish her all the best. She's a very good friend of mine, and people will not vote based on the fact that she's coming from this place. I also remember his, her contribution so far as internationalization is concerned. Because of her links with the UNESCO, she projected the university to that level. Of course, uh, leadership, um, people will have different perspectives. It's just like the, the, the describing the lion, oh sorry, the elephant, you know. People will look at the tail, others will at the bottom. But for me, this is a woman who has actually um, excelled in what I would describe as a, a typically masculine dominated environment, which hardly um, permitted women to rise to that highest epic. Uh, she contested with others in terms of pro vice chancellorship, she lost. And not many people thought she could become a vice chancellor. But she contested with others and she became the vice chancellor. And she succeeded during the four years, you know. So we may not have perfection, but I believe that this is a woman who exhibited visionary leadership. My expectation, one of the things, if we look at the fact that Globally, the United Nations globally, if you look at Sustainable Development Group 5, talking about gender equity, one expectation I really hope she will bring on board to help um, the flag bearer of the NDC, and for that matter, the NDC as a party and of the nation, is to uh, propel female representation on leadership activities. In fact, if we consider the fact that the constitution of Ghana itself um, promotes equal, equal opportunities, irrespective of gender, 
Uh, but the fact that even in parliament, the percentage of women in parliament are low. And the fact that if you interact with a number of female at our secondary schools, in our universities, a number of them are not encouraged. They assume that certain positions are for men, so they will not even dare. You want me to give you my candid view so far as her leadership as vice chancellor is concerned. Some people were not happy. Do you get me? During her tenure as the vice chancellor of this university, I was Utah president, a Utah executive at that time, and I know very much the concerns, the uh, concerns of most of our members. And some of the people who were his immediate subordinates, some of them were not happy about what was going on. She became a minister of state uh, as the minister of education one of the powerful ministries in this country. And you all know, I don't have to tell you, if there had not been a change of government, Professor Nano Pukwajiman was introducing a new policy with respect to book and research allowance. He said that he was going to introduce, uh, what do you call it, national research fund in place of book and research allowance. And we tried to argue vehemently against that but she didn't listen to us you were only saved by the bell that when uh, there was a change of government and the new government decided not to uh, what go on with that policy and the conversations will definitely continue but that will be all for today's edition of election brief for more news log on to myjoyonline.com i'm arvo crimson up next is sports today